This is the tutorial for the apron project. Get a Ziploc plastic bag to put all your parts in. Uh, keep all of your um, extra parts of your pattern folded up in there. Don't remove the pattern pieces once they're cut. Keep one pin inside of it so that you know what it is. Like this is the tie in. There's two of those. This tells me it's the neck strap and the pocket. This is the first piece we're going to be working with. And if you have an extra piece of scrap fabric, keep that around also for your fabric library and you might be able to make something else with it. The first part of the apron is making the pocket. Um, I'm going to teach you some shortcuts. I know some tricks on how to make it a little simpler. We're not going to be doing these parts. The first thing we're going to do is sew a one inch seam across the top of the pocket. We're going to be sewing a one inch stitch across the top of the pocket. So when you take the pattern piece off, take a pin and put it where the top of the pocket is. Then we'll know where the top is and we'll know where to sew the one inch seam line. When you're finished using the pattern piece, fold it up and place it back inside the pattern envelope. The first step in making the pocket is to just sew a one inch line across the top. The pin tells me this is the top of the pocket. The one inch line is the furthest line on the stitch plate. You don't need to back stitch because you're not holding two pieces of fabric together. Drop the needle down. Line up the fabric with the last line on the stitch plate. That's one inch. Stitch one inch across on both of the pockets and then you need to go to the ironing board. When you get to the iron, if the light is flashing, that means that the iron's turned off for safety reasons. And then just take the iron, put it down, and lift it up. This light will come on over here. That means it's preheating. We need to have water inside of the iron, so if it gets low, be sure to fill it up. It's everybody's responsibility to keep the water level up in the iron. When we're making the apron, when we're making anything in here, we use a lot of steam. So just slowly leave it in the holder and then just slowly pour some water in here. There is a drinking fountain fortunately for us right on the corner of the building and if the water bottles get empty go and refill them. We have sewn a one inch line with thread here and that's kind of like a drawing a line with a pencil and you're going to use the iron um, to fold this edge down. I really like this technique um, so woven fabric unravels. We've already learned how to do a zigzag finish on a raw edge, but for this we're going to do something called a clean finish. So you're going to take the raw edge and fold it to where that stitch line is. So if we stitched one inch, we're now folding in a half an inch. So use like the nose of the iron or the point of the iron to iron that down. So we now have folded in a half an inch and then that line will be the line that you're going to fold on. So I'm folding exactly on the stitch line. Use your fingers to hold it down and then iron right across there. And now we have what's called a clean finish. That's where you fold the raw edge under and you're going to go back to the sewing machine and stitch exactly close to that edge right there to create a hem. Now it's time to hem the top of the pocket. So you want to stitch as closely as possible to that edge that you folded under. So we folded to the stitch, folded another again to create a clean finish, and we're going to stitch that down. So again, place the needle down in the fabric, a little back stitch.
and now you've hemmed the top of the pocket. After you've hemmed the pocket, it's time to sew the rickrack on. So unwrap the uh, rickrack and place it. The first, the first row is going to be placed right on top of where you stitch the hem. So that should be about a half an inch down. Measure it out and cut it. You can cut a little bit extra um, so you make sure you have enough to go across. I'm going to change um, my thread to red. I've been sewing with kind of a brown color to match the apron, but now I'm just going to change the top thread. I don't have to change the bobbin, so the thread will match the rickrack. It's a little bit awkward to pin the rickrack. Um, it's going right on top of where you just stitched. So for me, I just kind of eyeball it and I lay it right on top of where I stitched. The other thing that feels a little funny when you're sewing the rickrack is that it's, it's wiggly. So what I do is I try to place it right in the middle of the presser foot and go straight down the center of it. So I place the rickrack in the center of the foot, um, put the needle down, do a couple back stitches. And go forward. So I'm looking at where the stitching is for the hem and I'm laying the rickrack right on top of that. And I'm keeping it in the center of the foot. So I'm just going down the middle of the rickrack. And I keep checking that it's on top of where the hem stitch is at. And then back stitch about four or five stitches at the end. You're going to sew two more rows and they're going to be placed one inch apart. Um, we have one inch rulers up on the demo table. I'm at home so I just have this two inch one. So I'm going to lay one inch, the one inch line down the center. If your white pencils that you have in your kit aren't showing up, I have these blue ones up um, on the tool tray to use. And then you're going to draw in a line one inch down. The fabric moves around a little bit so just press down with the ruler and then I'm going to go one inch from there and draw another line and those will be that will be the placement for your next two rows of rickrack and you'll do the same thing to the second pocket after you've sewn the rickrack on the pocket take it to the ironing board and from the wrong side press it and give it a steam to flatten it out the step after this is to sew a 5 8 inch line down one side of the pocket. There's no back stitch and there's no pivoting. You're going to crisscross here. Go across the bottom all the way to the end, then crisscross and go up to the top again at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. The stitching lines we're making now are going to be used to help us fold the pocket later. I'm starting at the top of the pocket where the hem is, I'm lining up at 5 8 You don't have to do a back stitch because we're just creating a, a, a stitch line for folding the pocket. You're not going to pivot. We need to make a crisscross line at the bottom of the pocket. Go all the way to the bottom. Then turn the pocket. Start at the bottom edge at 5 eighths. So all the way to the end of the pocket, and then again line up the next side at 5 8 so that you, your stitches crisscross each other. After you've stitched the pocket and you've created this crisscross here at the corner, that's a guide for you to fold up the fabric and iron it in place at a diagonal. This is called a mitered corner. So I'm going to fold exactly where the crisscross is at, right on the X, and you'll see that your stitches will match up to each other. And you're going to iron that corner down in place. 
and then very carefully you're going to clip this triangle off right here from stitch to stitch and that is going to make it so that when you fold along that 5 8 inch line where you stitched it you fold it up and you iron that down and you fold in the side and you iron that down it's going to create um, what's called oops, sorry it's going to create what's called a mitered corner so it's going to look nice and neat on the outside of your pocket here's a closer look at what that will look like when you iron it up you iron the, it up so that the crisscross thread is right there and these threads are lined up and then you're only cutting off this little triangle from thread to thread from stitch to stitch that's the only part that you should be cutting off. The best way to iron the pocket is to fold the bottom along the 5 8 inch stitch line first. Then you can fold in the side and make your nice mitered corner. And you have that stitch line to guide you so that you're folding exactly where you stitched at 5 8 so do the bottom first and then the sides. When you're all finished, it will look like this. The um, rickrack doesn't want to let the, the pocket lay flat. So what I like to do is go and stitch this down to hold all the flaps in. And when you're done with that, you can go ahead and pin it onto your apron.